you want to talk about Oracle's autonomous database. Global shard? Shards. Like, what's a global shard, man? That is a real word, by the way. Um, and uh, going on the theme of autonomous yep. and, you know, kind of easy writing, easy prompts um, and semantics. So it seems like I, I, um, I think I've mentioned this before. It's almost impossible to track everything that Oracle is doing across its entire um, portfolio. They, they're they moving so fast on cloud and moving everything into a cloud-like function, um, which is kind of what, you know, Microsoft is doing as well. You talk about a year-long um, year beta, right? That's very common now for these cloud-like solutions where you just let people play, see how it goes, get feedback, kind of iterate quickly and Oracle's been doing that quite a bit as well. So with distributed database, the function of distri distributed database has been um, has been around for some time. Now, this and it's not anything necessarily new um, or novel. What 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 Oracle does is novel, but it's not novel. Distributed is not novel in that you know a lot of databases you can shard them or cut off you know kind of sub databases if you will and store them locally around the world, right? causes a whole bunch of issues around performance, manageability, um, complexity, cross SQL between regions. It just gets super ugly to try and manage and performance gets really bad. What Oracle did was they took everything it, they've, they've built in over the last 40 years or so around clustering and performance and clustering, and they applied it to their distributed database. Um, so as you take these shards and you kind of Put them in India, China, you know, uh, Japan, wherever. Right? You you don't get all that complexity and that loss of performance. That's really cool stuff. That's been around for a bit. What they did is they took that all that capability and threw it into their autonomous database, which truly is a set and forget kind of mentality. Um, deploy it, set your parameters, set your um, set your requirements around you know, local data sovereignty, local data survivability, privacy, so on and so forth. Set your policies, set your requirements, set your performance requirements, and forget about it. It self heals, it self patches, it self monitors, manages, reacts. It does all of that on behalf um, of you or for you. So if I'm an IT organization with a multinational presence, number of DBAs I need and database specialists I need goes way, way down, right? Or I shouldn't say goes down, but they can do more value added functions other than kind of maintaining a database uh, shard in, or in sure. India or down in South America. Yeah. That's part one, part two, they have this function they built in, um, it's called select AI. And for people who have um, written in Oracle or used Oracle, they know what a select statement is. Um, it's kind of a play on words, but it essentially takes all of the complexity of SQL plus and PL SQL those languages you use to get data and manage data within Oracle, and it normalizes it. So instead of someone saying, I need to do a select da 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 from da 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 and under, needs to understand the semantics and the the uh, the language of, of SQL Plus, they can talk in English. Tell me all of the customers that reside in uh, Massachusetts and have the first name Will, right? Yeah. And you can get that out instead of creating a very complex um, SQL statement to do that. They've built that capability in as well. So again, you know, my business users across an enterprise have quicker access into my data and can use it more readily and more effectively than having to send them off to some programming school to understand how to write those prompts. Really cool functionality. They were yeah. literally years ahead of others. Um, the NoSQL community. Uh, that you know, a lot of folks have embraced to try and start, to try and accomplish some of this. Doesn't doesn't scale. Um, a lot of the competition doesn't scale and doesn't have this functionality built in. So they've got a, a really good head start over the competition. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's just a really cool fun you know, uh, functionality set of functionality for existing Oracle companies, and it shows how they're uh, not just relying on their existing customer base but really focused on this new type of customer that needs to be everywhere, anywhere at all times and uh, do so in a really quick and, and agile fashion. And I'll yeah, show you. Yeah, you know, 
the, the, the natural language query, I mean, that, that's a game changer, it just reduces the friction. And you talk about automation and certainly it's applicable in, in networking, uh, the area that I cover. When you can automate things, you can free IT professionals up to, to do more value added support for, for the lines of businesses that they're supporting, right? Yeah. So, yeah you, know, you know, well, 15 years ago, um, it used to be, you know, when I was in IT, you had a database team, you had a networking team, you had a server team, you had an apps team, you had a web team. You had all these teams that were dedicated, certified, and that's all they did. And this goes back to your NAS discuss, the NAS discussion and, and other areas of functionality too. Those, those, those silos are breaking yeah. down, right? IT needs to operate as a cloud, yeah. right? And this is how you get to that kind of cloud operating model. Yeah, for sure. And automation is key when it comes to delivering NAS as well. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Paul, anything to weigh in on here before we, we hit your... Um, I, I know, I just think, uh, you know, with all the concern about data privacy and sovereignty and this uh, shard by shard approach is a good thing. Uh, I've got a, a kind of a, a slogan you could take back to them is that uh, data that shards in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> What shards in Vegas stays in well, Vegas? I mean, I, mean, I, I learned something new today about global shards, you know, so thank you, Matt. 